Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is the Truth Be Told Flex Podcast, and I am your host, Sherry Yeshua Judah. Today is Thursday, August the 5th, 2021, and I would like to apologize for the lateness of the show. Um, life began to take hold, but as I promised, this show was going to go on, and we are going to continue to put this information out there today. We have a guest that is sitting with us. I don't know. She's been here more than once. So I don't even know if I can still call her a guest or is she a regular or what. But I do have my wife and she is going to sit in and she's going to join in with us today to help us with the program. How are you doing? I think at some point you have to stop referring to me as a guest, sir. I'm almost a permanent fixture. Two shows is a permanent fixture. <laughs> Kind, kind, kind. You are definitely right. Um, this that we are listening to, this is Samaria. The name of the cut is Israel. Um, I don't know how much recognition this young lady has, but she has a very nice catalog of music. And you can find it on YouTube and you know, I, I tell you, if you just want to get out of what we call the hip hop or the rap, and you want to listen to some good music, this is where you can find it. Whoever said that us as Hebrews do not be jamming, I, I don't know what they be, what, what they talking about, because we have some really talented people that give us some really good music. But with all that being said, we're about to get into our show. And this is episode number 21. And we titled this one here. What did we title it? Lambs, lambs and dragons. Lambs and dragons. That's what it is. Lambs and dragons. It's a lot going on in the world. News has has been exploding. Um, I know uh, last March, twenty twenty, a lot of people probably thought that it couldn't have gotten any worse than what it was but um it's about to get a lot worse in fact scripture tells us yasha said that it's going to get so bad that he had to cut it short because if he didn't the very elect would not even be able to make it through we're about to talk a lot about new york and um i want to start with this guy right here what is his name mayor de blasio de blasio check this cat out he got he has a lot of interesting stuff to say the anti-vaxxers uh, are criminal at this point what they are doing to this country is undermining our future they really are they're they're taking away the future of this country because if we go backwards if we go back to restrictions and shutdowns this country is going to be in a horrible dangerous place in terms of our lives our livelihoods our economy and if we don't get it right on vaccination, we're going to lose a huge number of Americans. There are people out there peddling this message, this anti-vax message for their own profit and then attacking people who try and do it the right way, like the small businesses you're talking about. We got to confront them. That's yeah. why I think these mandates are so crucial. We've got to shake people at this point and say, come on. Anti-vaxxers. He called us criminal, did he not? He did. He called us criminal. And he said that what they're doing to this country, and he also made notes saying that if we go back to lockdowns and shutdowns and whatever, right? So in other words, it seemed like to me, and I could be wrong, but it seemed like to me that he's blaming everything on 
the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated. Yeah. Um, it's it's unfortunate when I hear this type of this type of language because there are so many people that have picked up the same verbiage. They're not in a position to make certain decisions. They're not in a position to affect certain things um, for the masses anyway. This is just, you know, people I've come across their own personal uh, feedback, how they feel about um, the unpopulars, I will I will call, I will refer to these folks. They're unpopular. Um, they're unpopular because they don't agree with everybody else. They think for themselves. Right. They want to do the right thing by themselves and their family. But you have this other group that's saying, Everything that's going on right now is completely their fault. Mm. It's unfair. Right. Um, the same way the the unpopular group or the, I'm sorry, the same way the, the politicians and specifically the Blasio and, and people like him feel like the unpopular, it's all their fault. The unpopular feel the same way. Con, con, most definitely. And, you know, we live in we live in a country where you remember when they was arguing over abortions, right? And what? one of the things that was being said was what? My body, my choice. So whatever happened to that? Let me interject. I just have to say this. For all, all those individuals who laughed at uh, women's live groups, who talked about the independent woman and her having control over her body, Imagine that. Okay. Imagine that. And, and this is where we at, right? I mean, the guy said that they are criminals. And I wanted to leave with that, though. He say the unvaxxed, right? He say it's criminal what they're doing. You have to understand the language of politicians. Absolutely. The language of politicians is really what he was saying is, is that they are criminals. And what did the Bible say? Matthew 24 said what? That at, at some point they're going to do what? They're going to come. They're going to bring you before who? The judges right. and the magistrates. Well, speaking of language, if you listen to how he continues to have this con this, this conversation and trying to convince um, people that the unpopular groups are to blame for everything, he specifically says um, that they started off kind. Kind. Well, we ain't got there yet, have we? In the video? So, okay. <laughs> okay. You're right. I'm, 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 jumping the, I'm jumping the gun. You're absolutely right. Um, at the end of the day, I think what you have to be mindful of, no matter what side of the fence you're on, you have to understand the language that's being used. It is beyond forceful. They're referring to people as criminals. They are blaming uh, a population of people who feel like they have a, a decision, who have a choice. Kind. Um, and it's very confrontational. The, the language is very confrontational. There are certain things that he feels like needs to happen to these people who do not want to get vaccinated. Right, right. That was... I want to say, hold on. That was the wrong video that we started out on. So what I want to do is go to the video that we need. And we're going to come back to that video. So hold hold your thought, okay? And I hope this is the right one, baby. The anti-vaxxers uh, are criminal at this point. Ooh, that's the same. What one. they are doing to the... Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so I know which one it is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Where is your production person? Tonight? I know, right? I know, right? I know, right? Here we go. This is it. The vaccination as literally necessary to living a good and full and healthy life. The key to NYC pass will be a first in the nation approach. It will require vaccination for workers and customers in indoor dining, in indoor fitness facilities, indoor entertainment facilities. This is going to be a requirement. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. The goal here is to convince everyone 
that this is the time. If we're going to stop the Delta variant, the time is now. And that means getting vaccinated right now. Not everyone's going to agree with this. I understand that. But for so many people, this is going to be the life-saving act that we're putting a mandate in place. It's going to guarantee a much higher level of vaccination in this city. And that is the key to protecting people and the key to our recovery. And we know that this is what's going to turn the tide. And we also know that people are going to get a really clear message. If you want to participate in our society fully, you got to get vaccinated. You got to get vaccinated. It's time. All right, people, that is what I want to start with. I do want to apologize also, as my wife said, I need I need to have a, a bigger budget so I could get some production people up in here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Right, right. But that was very confrontational talk. Absolutely. Very. He ended it with, you have to get vaxxed. You have to get vaxxed. Did you hear the language that if you want to participate in our society, in our society, mm -hmm. he's not just talking about New York, although yeah, he is they're setting the precedence. They New are York setting, been setting the precedence though. from this day one. New, this is not new territory for them. Exactly. Why they are the epicenter for setting precedence for for um, everything to do with COVID-19. I'm, I'm sure I don't know. But they are literally putting themselves out there in the forefront to change everything. Everything. I don't know what it is about New York as well, but I know that Governor Como, every day, he had him a segment where he came on and he talked the same rhetoric that de Blasio is talking right now. Now, a lot of people don't understand the blue and the red, and I don't want to get too far off into that. But if you look at the pattern, these blue states, New York and California, these two jokers got some strange stuff going on up in there, man. Now, Texas is a red state, right? But the city of Houston is being led by a blue, mm -hmm. a blue mayor. Mm -hmm. And so and a judge. And a and a Major blue County exactly, County. right? Today, this lady gets on the news and tells people of Houston that if you're not vaccinated, I don't know if you heard it or not, but her words were, if you're not vaccinated, you need to stay at home unless you have to go and buy the necessities. You understand what I'm saying? Now, my governor, and yeah, he my governor because I like the way he talk. Now, I'm not into politics, okay, for you super brews out there. But the governor, right, he say, look, not going to mandate the mask. Uh, and we're not going to have a shutdown. cocktail. We're not going to have a shutdown. Neither are we going to have a cocktail pass in this state. Correct. But the mayor come, the city of Houston come and say, hey, we're going to mandate the mask in the city of Houston. How is the mayor going to override what the governor say? As a common people, and this is where we as people, we have forgot. I asked the question, whatever happened to my body, my choice? The next question I have is, whatever happened to the government supposed to be working for us? Oh, but you don't think that's what they're doing? Because they've convinced the majority of us that that's what needs to happen. So they are working for the majority. It's, it's crazy that we live in this. No one could have told me before March of 2020 that we would be living in a society that we're looking like a bunch of hamsters running on a dead gun wheel. And it's interesting that you say that because uh, I had a conversation with an individual um, not too long ago. And one of the things that we talked about previously was that you can't imagine, we couldn't have imagined before March, 2020 that we would have been mandated to wear masks. That my gov government could tell me I gotta wear a mask everywhere I go. We've been watching people in other in other countries do that for years, and we thought it was interesting. Not that it was mandated, but we just thought that was the craziest thing ever. See these folks walking around in masks all the time. Right. Some of them were wearing it for different reasons, but that being said, you come over to the states and forget what all the other countries are doing. This is America. Right. This is the United States right. of America. How are you forcing people to do things that they don't want to do? Right. And that, and it's not like this is a law. It's a mandate. Come on. There's a difference between a law and a mandate. And a mandate. 
This is a mandate. They being our daddy right now. Hold your thought. We're going to, I want you to finish when we come back. We at, at the time where we need to break for our music. All right. That good. It works. This is the only time I'm able to tell you to be quiet and get away with it. Let's go. Israel. Yeah. 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 Your pie Q, she mix. Light, light, light. That's my sister. sister. I see how you're changing. I'm like, go oh, girl. Go oh, girl. You ain't trying to be a part of this world. Cover up your body and I love it, girl. 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 Yeah. I see how you're changing. I'm like, go oh, girl. Go oh, girl. You ain't trying to be a part of this world. This world. Cover up your head and I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. Who got the keys to the Jeep? Room. Who got the keys to the King? Gum. How you going shaking your butt up, bum, 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 bum? Why you out here talking this dumb, dumb, dumb? Devil wins some, but he just lost this one. Can't give him now, no, this is my mission. Only time I'm throwing up my hands to do a fist pump. Power to the sisters that go against the grain. Praying for your strength in the Savior's name. Look at our sisters who lose it all for fame. They call it bad B, but it is profane. Let us be real, it's all for romaine. God giving dollars don't come with no change. My God and your God know they not the same. World domination, you pinky here. That's my sister. sister. I see how you're changing. I'm like, go oh, girl. Go oh, girl. You ain't trying to be a part of this world. Cover up your body and I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. Yeah. I see how you're changing. I'm like, go oh, girl. Go oh, girl. You ain't trying to be a part of this world. This world. Cover up your head and I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. You might be blown up, but your spirit is combusting. Boom. Say no one that's selling the records on his David Ruffin. Oh. Excuse me, I'm rude. I miss my introduction. I'm just a little servant trying to give you repercussions. Amen. We supposed to grow when there's no Benjamin Button. These seeds that you planting, don't be surprised when they fruitless. Trying to get you a Boaz and you acting so ruthless. Life and death is in the tongue. You help kill our people. No slick, slick, splatter, but frivolous chatter. Then you got the nerve to holler black lives matter. Rolling morality off your shoulders like you pledge. Cap. <laughs> That's my sister, sister. I see how you're changing. I'm like, go oh, girl, go oh, girl. You ain't trying to be a part of this world. Cover up your body and I love it, girl. 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 Yeah. I see how you're changing. I'm like, go oh, girl, go oh, girl. You ain't trying to be a part of this world. This world. Cover up your head and I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. I love it, girl. Indeed, indeed. I came across that one today. That was my first time hearing that. Um, honestly, I haven't heard anything from your pod Q that I have not liked. Um, top five Hebrew artists. I'll co-sign with that. Top five Hebrew artists. But uh, go ahead and finish your, your thought on what you were saying. So the last thing I was saying, um, you told me to be quiet. And you said it's the uh, only time you get to tell me that and get away with it. We've been married 20 years. You should know by now you did not get away. With okay. It, but okay. <laughs> Having said that, um, it, so what I was saying is it's interesting listening to people who spoke one way previously and now they're speaking a different way. And I, I think this is true definition of mob mentality. Exactly. Because six months ago, there were people who didn't feel the need for everybody to get vaccinated. They, it just, it wasn't a topic of conversation in terms of that's something they, they completely felt needed to happen. They, uh, you know, it's, it's people's choice, whatever they want to do. And here we are six months after that previous conversation. And now their whole outlook has changed. They, they are absolutely for the vaccine to the point where they are mad at their own relatives for not getting it. They're sending text messages to their relative who have the same concerns, you know, all the unpopular people have. They don't feel like they want to need to and they don't want to either. Um, but ha having said that, it's just interesting to hear all of the different viewpoints now that weren't for it. They didn't care one way or the other. Matter of fact, they were probably on the fence. And now you have so many more people saying everybody needs to do it. Everybody needs to do it. You guys are to blame. You guys are to blame. You guys are to blame. Um, it's just it's it's mob mentality. It's 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 dangerous. It's going and it's going to get even more dangerous out here because what the media is doing. The media 
is doing is causing division amongst family and friends and even just society as a whole. It's, it's straight hypocrisy as well, right? Because this is a nation who have done everything that they possibly could to make everybody inclusive in everything, uh, no bullying, right? They had a whole daggum campaign about bullying. Now, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s, right? And, you know, I don't know too many people that grew up when I grew up that didn't have to deal with some type of a bully. When nobody running around killing themselves over being bullied. And now, these kids so soft, they killing themselves because they gotten bullied over social media. But back to what I'm saying is that now that's exactly what the media is doing, though. They are bullying people who have an opinion. Agreed. It's not that I'm an anti-vaxxer. I am a person with my own mind. <laughs> I'm popular. <laughs> it's just it's unpopular. I can think for be. myself, and yet but you, you feel. Exactly. Listen to what he said. That's my point. You you shouldn't think for yourself. Right. How dare you? How dare you it think for yourself? It's ridiculous that you question <laughs> what we're telling you. <laughs> New York has become the first city, baby. New York has become the first city to require a cocktail pass. Now, now think about that. This is America, the land of the free. Free. That's what they say, right? Every song that they got with liberty and justice for all. But as yet, as you got a cocktail. but yet the Blasio, right, has come up with if you want to function in our society, is what he said. And we're gonna revisit that video. If you want to function in our society, you have to take the cocktail. Now they're going to be the first major city to require proof of COVID-19 vaccine. And again, this is fair use, COVID-19 vaccine. I'm reading straight from the article, okay? I'm going to bring this article up. There it is, right? The first major U.S. city to require proof of COVID-19 vaccine, uh, vaccination at a restaurant, gyms, and other businesses, Mayor Bill de Blasio said Tuesday as the nation grapples with rapidly spreading Delta variant. You know, you know they riding in France right now, right? No, I was not aware of that. Can you guess what they ride in about? Okay. Cocktail ID. Mm. It almost seemed like to me, and you know sometimes I jump off the boat by myself, right? Uh, yes. But it almost seemed like to me that all of these politicians in all of these nations is stirring the brew for uncivil rest. This is what they want. Especially when you get to talking crazy stuff like that in America. Crime is already risen to a height that is that is make me be like, man. It's ridiculous and it's across the board. It's it's in multiple places that we visited as of late. Like I keep seeing things pop up about this particular event happening and this particular event happening and this particular event happening. And it's just rampant. Things that you wouldn't have expected. It's not just your regular crime, if you will. There are things going on right now that you wouldn't have convinced me 10 years ago would ever happen, at least not in the numbers that they're happening. It's, it's, it's beyond bad. So think about when they start telling people who are used to going to restaurants, right? Who are used to just going to fitness centers, who are used to going to the movies that you can't come in here unless you have a cocktail pass. 
how you think that's going to go? I mean, look at, and, and I, even though I don't believe the, the stories, I believe that it's a narrative. They got all of this unrest on the airplanes, on, 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 on you, right? Here's, here, here's the thing, though. People are willing to compromise. That's, that's what this, that's what this guy is saying as we go through the they're, rest they're of this. They're compromised. This, uh, vid, and that is so wicked, right? Because you gonna you gonna see it my way, whether you want to or not. We break your will. We gonna break your will. Of course. People are willing to compromise. I, I think we said it. We said it months and Sundays ago that that's what they were going to start implementing. Kind. Um, I think I heard you say it. Gosh, but before they were before the the cocktail was even ready to go. I'm pretty sure. The conversation was they're going to force you to get it and they're going to start taking things away from you and saying you're not allowed to do these things if you don't get it. And people are going to break. People are going to break. I want to read this line right here. And this is something that you're going to hear in the video as well. But he say that this is Mayor de, de Blasio. It's time for people to see vaccinations it's literally necessary to live in a good and full and healthy life. That's politician cold talk. In other words, that if you want to have any any kind of sense of normalcy in this world, if you want to you want to function anything like you used to, the only way you're gonna to have to do that is by getting the vaccine. And we have got to understand, like we done already pointed out, that he's not just talking about New York here. He's setting the he's setting the tone. He's setting the standard. He's setting the bar. This is the bar. They are allowing the politicians of New York, the governor, and the mayor both to set the bar for the rest of the place. I mean, we got some good old boys down south, man. This stuff is not going to go. Well, you'd be surprised. What I said is people will compromise depending on what it's for. Okay. Everybody has a breaking point. Agreed. I agree with that totally. Let's get back to this video. Let's get back to this video. I'm going to start it back at the beginning. The anti-vaxxers uh, are criminal at this point. What they are doing to this country is undermining our future. They really are. They're, they're taking away the future of this country because if we go backwards, if we go back to restrictions and shutdowns, this country is going to be in a horrible, dangerous place in terms of our lives, our livelihoods, our economy. And if we don't get it right on vaccination, we're going to lose a huge number of Americans. There are people out there peddling this message, this anti-vax message for their own profit and then attacking people who try and do it the right way, like the small businesses you're talking about. We got to confront them. That's yeah. why I think these mandates are so crucial. We've got to shake people at this point and say, come on now. We tried voluntary. You know, we could not have been more kind and compassionate as a country. Free testing everywhere you turn, incentives, friendly, warm embrace. The voluntary phase is over. We can keep doing those things. I'm not saying shut it down. I'm saying voluntary alone doesn't work. It's time for mandates. The ideal here is get everyone vaccinated and it's necessary. So what gets us there? Sometimes the voluntary approach works. I think that was true in the first months. We think now saying you got to get vaccinated. If you don't, then you're responsible for testing every single week, which is a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. is going to move a lot of people to vaccination. It's just going to be the moment where they say, OK, the hell with it. I'm going to do it. But if that's not yeah. enough, I think we got to be ready to climb the matter ladder more. And I think private sector yeah. entities can do some of that right now. Public sector entities need to move as quickly as possible. This DOG decision is important. I think that'll be helpful. We got to put pressure on this situation, evolutionary but fast evolutionary. What you think? Uh, there's a scripture that comes to mind. 
when I hear how he approached that whole um we were we were nice. We were as kind and compassionate as a country. They're basically telling you nice guy is gone. We're about to force this down your throat. Kind. How, how long have you been hearing me say <laughs> that at some point they're going to stop asking and they're going to start telling you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what's interesting about this is the, the people who feel like those folks who don't want to get the cocktail are absolutely crazy, absolutely ridiculous. Um those same individuals six months ago, if you had asked them, let's take it back further. If you had asked them two years ago, could their country force them to do certain things? They would have told you, no, absolutely not. It's a free uh, country. You can't make me do that. Uh, and then they started saying, you got to wear a mask. And now, although they haven't forced it on Everybody, mm -hmm. there are individuals and groups, specific sectors mm -hmm. that you have to, if you want to keep this or keep that, you better get it done. It's interesting that he said that private businesses and public businesses, and most of these private businesses have already started doing it, uh, mandate. Uh, you can't get on cruise lines right now unless you have um, the cocktail. Um, I'm sure it's the same way with airlines, and if not, it's going to be at, at some point, right? Um, we living in a time where, and I, I, I honestly did not, did not think that I would see this day and time in my own lifetime, in my lifetime. I thought this was going to be something that was going to be, that was going to happen, you know, uh, in my grandchildren's lifetime or somewhere down the road. But we're living in a time where you can see that whatever the machine, whatever the machine was built to do, it's about to do it. Mm-hmm. Because this is not new now, you know. All of the, everything that we're seeing right now is an effect of things that have happened in the past. It's, it is just now coming to a head. Right. So even the liberties that we thought that we had in the past, we really did not have. Right. That was the, you remember the Geico commercial with the dollar bill? You gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> Almost had it. Almost had it. Yes, sir. That's what that's what it that's is absolutely. being. That's absolutely what it is. Right? Because think back before 9 11 2001 America. And look at post 2001 9 11. Our kids don't know what it life was before that. All they know is right. Right. I'm old enough to remember when you could smoke cigarettes in restaurants. Mm -hmm. I'm old enough to remember when you did not have to put on a seatbelt yep. in your car. And what's interesting to me about that is even though those seem like common sense things now, common sense, you get in the car, first thing you do is strap up. Kind, it, it's, it's go, habitual now, right? For people who are smokers, they go in a restaurant, they wouldn't dream of smoking up. It's 20 degrees outside, they gonna bundle up and take their tails outside and have that cigarette, if it's that important to them. But they gonna go do it, right? They convinced people a long time ago, we can put these things in place and you will be forced to do them if you want X, Y, Z. But I go back to Two years ago, you there are people here who would tell you there's no way my country can force me to wear a mask. Mm. And so fast forward, I'm having conversations with people and obviously topics about the cocktail comes up. Previously, not necessarily interested in getting getting the cocktail. Now, two of this changed, getting the cocktail. So I throw this out there. What 
about guns? Hmm. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? What, what about guns? You don't think at some point they're going to start moving to that because of the unrest exactly. that's going on? Our unrest may not be like Venezuela's unrest. Come on. But there is definitely unrest. And they're pitting people against each other. That's exactly what they're doing. So even though you you are for the cocktail right now, totally 100% for it, you and your family, all got it. But you are adamant. They are not coming here to take your guns. They better not. Man, don't you know that the Australian... The Australian people, citizens of Australia, bought into the logic that the Australian government gave them, which was if you give up your gun, give up your, I'm going to say Second Amendment, right? Now, I don't know if it's the Second Amendment in Australia, but it's Second Amendment here, right? If you give up your rights to bear arms, crime would go down, right? Crime would go down and we would have a more better life, right? And so the people in Australia, they agreed to it. They gave, and they watched them take their guns away from them and melt them down into nothing. And so now everybody in Australia is unarmed, but guess what did not happen? The crime didn't go down. Crime didn't go down. And the people now, you have legal, uh, law-abiding citizens who are what? Vulnerable. And that's the same thing that they're going to try to do here. And I say try with that. You'll probably get people to take that cocktail before you get these good old boy Southerners down oh, for here sure. For to, sure. to, give up, to give up their guns. But my point is, my point is, at some point, you have to know that language is going to start. That's exactly what's going to happen. And there are going to be people the same way you have individuals who feel strongly about not touching their guns. Those same individuals are the same ones who you're not going to make me do this. Did you know that the CDC has already said that gun violence is a health issue? Yeah. So if the CDC saying that gun violence is a health issue, and this is the same people that have shut everything down because of a health issue. You don't think they can take you? And I get tired of hearing people saying what the government can't do. Man, that's a misnomer. <laughs> they, can, they have clearly proven they can do whatever Ever, they want to do. Whatever the hell I mean, they, they want to do. They, think about little bitty things like this. I, I don't know exactly when it was implemented, but here in Texas... There used to be a certain thing if you got a ticket and your ticket was for not having insurance, um, you would get something assessed called a surcharge. Kind. You have to pay that surcharge and the surcharge is $233. Don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> but the surcharges were $233. They allowed you to make monthly payments. Let's say you started off paying 200 or you started off paying your monthly payment is $13 mm -hmm. and every month you have to pay that until it's paid off. If you miss one payment, if you got up to $225 and you missed one payment, what the government, what the, what the state of Texas do to you? They rolled it all back over and you had to start over. I don't know now, suffice it to say they have since, gotten rid of that law. Mm -hmm. Somebody somewhere fought that and they said, y'all, hey, y'all doing too much. You can't do that to the people. That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I can almost guarantee it happened to some politician or some politician's kid or something along those lines when they finally made the decision that this is a ridiculous law. It's stupid. We need to get rid of it. But not before regular folk who probably couldn't afford insurance Come. at the time paid in essence, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in surcharge fees that are now considered illegal. Everything is about money. And that's one of the last points that I want to hit on. Mayor de Blasio said that people are profiting. Anti-vaxxers are profiting. Uh, yeah, I heard that. Uh, right? Did I miss They're something? They're doing this for profit. What people need to understand, and I hope that I 
explain this clear. I hope that I make sense when I say this, that them giving you the cocktail is profit. That's what this is all about. This is all about profit. Oh, of course. What you got? Well, I keep hitting the same points over and over again just because they're so relevant. But if you consider what he said at the very beginning, um, that this country has been as kind and compassionate. Kind. How, say, as, how did he say? Kind as, and compassionate. This country. As kind and right. compassionate. To let you know that he's not just talking about New York. He said this country. Come on now. This country has been as kind and compassionate as it can be as a country. We've done everything from free testing, incentives, friendly. So he's the spokesperson for the country right now. That's basically what he's saying. Right. We've we've done all the nice things. Right. We've done everything we can. To bring to bring you to the table and tell you, hey, we care about you. Right. We we were concerned. Right. When has this country ever, ever been, been so, so concerned, concerned that they gave something away free? Come on now. Doesn't that make you leery? I mean, if you so concerned about people's health, so concerned about people's lives, what about all of these dead gums? I could drive right now. Up under Fuquay, up under 45 and Fuquay, you got a whole dead gum. Minor city of homeless people up under there. Absolutely. Come on, you you worried about me having a mask on, or whether or not I got this dead gun jab in my arm or not? But I don't see none of y'all with these suits on that's in these political arenas going down here taking care of these homeless people. Right, because that's a pandemic. That's a pandemic. They hungry and they shelterless, and we talking about. What's supposed to be what the greatest nation? Hey, God bless America. And no place else. No place else. Let me hit this uh this promo right quick. And we're gonna uh continue with what we're doing. Thank you, baby. <laughs> This is brought to you by The Light Magazine and Kingdom Culture Radio. It's going to be the third annual dip, drip, I'm sorry, third annual drip in silk. It's going to be a gold carpet affair. It's going to be hosted by nine other There's going to be live performances. Um, Zamiria Israel, the young lady who started out my show. going to be 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. live in Arlington, Texas. Don't see me there, but beat me there. And this is also the information that you need to be able to get there. You can get the information. You can get your pre-ticket sales at tlmagazines.net. And contact for packages. There's going to be vendor tables and also detailed information. You can get that there at um, tlmagazine.net. And with that being said, don't miss the date. Again, it's going to be August 29th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. All right. Finish your thought. There, there are a lot of thoughts. <laughs> um, I, I don't know that I can just finish a thought, but the, the conversation um, it, it just it, it, it keeps repeating itself. It's the same kind of rhetoric. Rhetoric. It just it's frustrating as somebody who's an independent individual thinker to be forced to listen to the lingo that, that we're hearing. Exactly. Um, they are making people draw lines now um, within households. I, I used to read Matthew, well, I often have read Matthew 24, and I've said to myself often, how is it that it's, what's going to happen in the world is going to put a father against his son or a mother against her daughter? And now I see it. 
I oh, see. Sure. Oh, yeah. It's as it's, 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 it's clear as, as, yeah. as, as light now. You know what I'm saying? I never could understand that, but now I get it because you have households for real that are divided mm -hmm. on this issue. And not just father and son and mother and daughter, but also husbands and wives, yeah. children and parents. Mm -hmm. They are divided on this issue. And this is exactly what they want. So I am not crazy by saying that the plan is to bring in this civil unrest. They want us to be. Because if everything goes completely crazy, the only thing left to do is what? Marshall. That's a scary thought. The only thing left to do is Marshall. That, that's a scary thought to consider how easy we as we as a country allowed it to happen. Psalms they oh Psalms they I want you to finish, but Psalms 83 say they have taken crap to counsel. Go ahead. People are gonna look back at this 10, 15, 20 years from now when they see themselves. 10, 15, 20, you think we got that much time? Go ahead. <laughs> For people who are optimistic, okay, for those optimistic people that feel like twenty years is still it's still a possibility. Um, I'm not cutting anybody short. There are people who are going to look back and ask the question: How did we get here? Come. How did we not see this Come. happen? You know, one of my favorite, absolute favorite TV shows um, that I just picked up on this year, and it's been it's been out for a while. I literally just picked up on it this year and got hooked immediately. Handmaid's Tale. Mm. You still haven't watched it. You, I think you watched a few episodes, but one of the telltale signs of that movie to me, even though it's on a slightly different um, dynamic that they're they're discussing, one of the telltale signs um, for me in terms of where this country is going is a comment that one of the characters made. She said, well, they were doing it for the good of the country. Mm -hmm. They said they did it because of mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. um, because of the terror, terrorist, mm -hmm. uh, the ter terroristic threat. I saw that episode. For the terror, right? Mm -hmm. The other lady said, what if there were never any terrorists to begin with? Uh, what if they lied to us uh, about that? And then there's just other little things that come up during the course of this series that make you believe, make you see how easy it is for our country to manipulate us into doing certain things or to accepting certain things. Things that we would have accepted 15 years ago. I won't go into the details. 15 of what years those ago, are. some of the things we wouldn't accept it just 12 months ago, just 12 months ago. I, I, I was coming up to that. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, though, the things that we say would have never happened however long ago, 15 years, 10 years, 5 years, 12 months ago. These things are now happening. Yeah. Have happened. Con. That brings us, um, that was great for the segue in which we're going right now, the breakthrough in Massachusetts. The question was asked, what if there never was, right? Mm -hmm. I, You know me already. I don't believe nothing that they say. I don't believe nothing that I see on the news. I don't believe nothing that they say which also means that I don't believe in the Delta hangover. I really don't. My thought is, is that the Delta hangover are the fully vaccinated. Those that are all cocktailed up. That's what the Delta, that's the Delta variant. That's I, crazy talk, sir. I, I mean, can't imagine. think about it. I mean, we can't say that all of these people that got the jab are all of a sudden have gotten sick and they dying, right? So we got to create a reason so for everybody getting sick. And the, and the reason is a mutated virus. Now, we're talking about a virus. And people, you can go look this up for yourself. We're talking about a virus that has a 99 point something. I don't know what that point is. But we're talking about a virus that has a 99 point something recovery rate. 
You can go Google this here yourself. It does not warrant all of this that is going on in the world right now. It does not warrant it, okay? So now all of a sudden we got this Delta variant that's out here that's just supposed to be so bad, so bad. Which brings us to the breakthrough in Massachusetts, okay? Mm -hmm. Breakthrough in Massachusetts. This is the article. Oh. Let me bring up this article. There it is right there. A new report that was issued by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention last Friday found that 74% of people who were infected in a COVID-19 breakout and uh, outbreak in Massachusetts earlier this summer, they were fully vaccinated against the virus. Wait a minute. I like the way they wrote this. Fully vaccinated against the virus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But 74% of them was sick. Right. 74% of them was sick. This data also found that people, this is where I want to go with this. This data also found that people who are fully vaccinated and get infected can carry as much of SARS-CoV. Let me put this up here because I, I need it to be seen. sars COVID-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 in their noses as those who are unvaccinated. As a result, they can spread the infection to others. So I got one simple question, okay? And I don't know if this goes with your notes or not, but I have one simple question. If the, if the people who are cocktailed up can still spread this stuff, why in the world do I need to go get cocktail up? Because it seemed like to me that all the cocktail people are sick, while the uncocktailed up people are not sick. So uh, on that same vein, I have a couple questions. If you have a cocktail and she has a cocktail, why are you worried about if they got the cocktail? Come on now. If you get the cocktail, and especially the double one, and still get drunk. What was the point of the cocktail? What was the point of the cocktail? I'd much rather take my chances of getting drunk on my own because the chances are when I sober up, I'm going to sober up great. And never and get drunk again. Not just <laughs> never get drunk again. Even if I get close to it, Con. I'll recover faster. Con. Because now my body is has used, antibodies. It's used to that in, it, in my system. Come on, if now. that gets entered into my system artificially, I think my system gets a little worried. Like, okay, what what's going on? They don't know how to protect it. Right. I just believe our body is is uh, incredible and wonderfully made, and there are certain things that we do not have to do to it. It will do for itself. Kind. I, I I agree with you as well on that, man. It's it, and it's crazy because and this is the thing, man. I I saw some I saw a post that said that if if you get the cocktail, you don't believe in the Most High. Well, actually, the, the post said if you get the cocktail, you don't believe in God. I agree with that, right? Uh, what's his name? Joe Biden did create me, right? Mayor Bill de Blasio did not create me. Dr. Fauci. Did not create me. Right on. That other lady that they got now that's the talking head, that's the uh, director of the CDC, she did not create mm -hmm. me. Who he, create, helped create the cocktail, Kizimit McCormick, she didn't Did not create right me, on. okay? He who created me gave me this beautiful thing that is called an immune system. And so you got all these people out here scared to get sick, not understanding that getting sick is actually a gift. A you want to get sick. Right. Because once you get sick, your body will do 
everything that it possibly can to save your life. And once it is found, that culprit, you got detectives inside of you. You got right. you got the tech and they don't go and they don't sleep. They don't sleep and they don't take lunch breaks. They stay up all day long. They call T cells. They stay up all day long with their flashlights and they walk around and they look at everything. I imagine T cells like Mr. T walk around somebody. I pity the fool. You, 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 you dig me, man? And when the T cells see it, he holler, ha! And the B cells kick in. Right. That's when you start getting the fever. That's when you might get diarrhea. That's when you start getting a headache. That's when you, all you want to do is lay down because your B cells is building antibodies. Right. And once your B cells built these antibodies and it took care of whatever it is that them T cells found, guess what? You ain't got to worry about it no more. No more do you have to worry about it. Now, I take your cocktail and I got a full working Immune system. You can, this analogy even works in life. I'm working on something. I'm working hard. And here you come say, man, you're doing that all wrong. Let me show you how to do that. And you take the tools out of my hand and you start doing it. And now I'm sitting back looking at you doing it. What am I going to do? Nothing. That's exactly what they're doing to your immune system. Even if you're doing it wrong, I'm not going to correct you. You understand what I'm saying? Autoimmune deficiencies. Yep. That's what these people are dying from and getting sick. And you got all of these people who have gotten COVID, right? Who have gotten a cocktail. Who have gotten a cocktail. And then they go get I mean, who have gotten drunk, I'm sorry, and then they go get the cocktail when your body done already built up antibodies for it, and now you wonder why you getting sick again. 74% of those who was fully cocktailed up, baby. And then they tell you in that same thing right there, data fine, that the people who are fully vaccinated to get infected can carry as much SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 in their noses and their, who are unvaccinated as a result, they can spread the infection too. I'm more scared of them right. than I am the people who have not gotten the content. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't disagree with you at all. So maybe I don't want to function in this society. De Blasio. <laughs> huh? Thank goodness you're not in New York right there, right? Man, look girl, Don't you know that this is the type of stuff, though, that in China would get your head cut off? This is where we going to. I got a whole book on quotes of NWO, New World Order, from the 1800s all the way up to the present day. This is why I say that this is not anything new. One government, one government, one law for all the people is what these people are looking for. NWO. NWO. And they have used, and they have used this plan damage to be able to usher that in. Mm -hmm. Sheep being led to the slaughter. Sheep being led to the slaughter. This is your shoe, Judah. This has been lambs and dragons. And dragons. Episode number 21. I want to thank my baby for again sitting down with me and sharing, you know, her wisdom. She's smart. She's very smart. I thank you. <laughs> I really do thank you. But again, this is Year You Shoot Judah, and this is Truth Be Told Flex Podcast. And whatever you do, hit that like button, subscribe. You can even hit the unlike button, the thumbs down. It don't matter. It's just going to generate the show that other people will be able to see it. And uh, leave us comments as well. With that being said, we are out of here. And thank you, and we will see you next week.